G'day and welcome to our summer special water sports edition of The Boat Show. Tonight we're showing you the ins and outs of how to get you, your family and friends ready to hit the water this summer. And what better way to cool off than with some wakeboarding with Chris, some very talented riders and the Malibu VLX wake setup. We also catch up with Matt from John Crawford Marine to make sure our boat registration is compliant. Chris talks to us about the joys of your first boat and why your insurance should allow for the little things when learning the ropes on your tip. Tim Morgan introduces side imaging technology for onboard sounders and we get to meet the police dive squad based at the Brisbane Water Police headquarters. But first, let's catch Chris before hitting the water to address what you need to know about towing a rider this summer. Hi everyone and welcome to another exciting episode of The Boat Show. Uh, we're going to go to the river and do some riding a little bit later on, but before we head off down there with the boat, I thought I'd have a quick chat to you about uh, some equipment and uh, some general rules when you're riding and things like that, or skiing, um, and basically talk about age groups that, that can participate, um, what sort of products you can use, what sort of boats you can use, and things like that. So I thought I'd give you a little bit of an understanding before we head off and we go and do some riding a bit later on. So basically the first one is a lot of people ask me some questions, particularly about age. How, how young can you be when you can start riding and things like that? And, and there is a, a few guidelines, they're not hard and fast rules, but there is some guidelines that we like to use. So um, traditionally with real little kids like Little Tots, we tend to use them uh, on things like knee boards and tubes and things just to get them used to being towed around um, before they progress to skis and wakeboards. The only one we probably steer clear of a little bit until the kids are a little bit older and a bit stronger is maybe wakeboarding, um, just because of their physique and things like that and, and just their hips and so you don't want to have hip displacement problems and things. Um, so around about five or six is a good age group to start actually wakeboarding um, if they're little kids. They can start skiing a little bit earlier on the trainer skis so there's no problem with them going out there but if they're quite fit kids and they're a little bit bigger and things and, and they can handle it, yeah sure you can pop them on at a younger age and, and have them uh, get out there and have a bit of a go at it. Um, so the next one is too, whenever you take anybody out, whether it be younger people or older people, we always just want to make sure that you keep um, the boat speeds and the equipment within the ability levels of whoever is the rider. So whether it be somebody who's real little or somebody who's elderly, Everybody can have a go. You've just got to make sure that you keep the pace of the boat um, and the techniques when you drive the boat and also when you're towing. Make sure you've got a really alert observer um, that understands what you're doing. Uh, make sure you've got the right ropes and the right equipment, um, the right boards, the right skis. You know, like the gears progressed so far, which we'll talk about a little bit later on, but it's moved so far forward in the last, you know, even four or five years from what it was. Um, you know, there's better bindings on boards and etc. So we'll go through that, but it's it's definitely good to keep people on the gear they should be on um, to suit their ability. And the next one, I guess, is probably to talk a little bit about safety when you're out there as far as when you're actually driving the boat. Things that you need to be aware of. You need to be aware of where other boats are in your vicinity. So you don't want to be cutting across behind somebody who's towing a skier and not realise they've got ropes and people out the back. Same goes as if they're in the water. You always put your hand up if you're in the water and the observer should always put their hand up in the boat when somebody falls off to signal that they've actually fallen off and there's somebody is in the water. So when another boat's coming near them, they've got an idea that you guys have got somebody in the water and a rope out the back of the boat. Um, so there's a few things like that that you need to do. Um, make sure you know of any underwater obstacles around the area. So particularly if the, and, and we have had this of late, you know, we get some big rainfalls. There's quite a bit of debris can end up in the rivers. And also when you're towing people in, make sure you don't tow them too close to the bank when you drop them off. There is a regulation and, a, and you know, we, we kind of use a rule, it's about 30 feet that we stay off the bank whenever we drop someone off. And that just gives us that safety margin if they go out on the rope a little bit far. They don't end up up on the bank, you don't want to hurt anybody, you're out there to have fun. So there's some general rules you, you should adhere to. You always have to adhere to all of your normal boaty, boating safety rules. Must have an, a, a licensed driver on the boat that's, you know, had particularly, they should have some experience in actually towing somebody on equipment. So that's always nice if you've got somebody who's an experienced driver. If you don't have any experience, it doesn't mean you can't do it, but it'd be great if you could uh, have a chat to your friends or even go and do some training or coaching with someone. And we, you know, in the boating industry, there's quite a few people that are able to help you out with that and explain it. And what you can do then is you can tow people safely and get some experience under your belt that way. So 
that, that's just a couple of general guidelines that you go along with um, just to make it a safe and fun day out on the water. All right, so the next thing I'd like to talk about with everyone is um, types of boats. So everybody thinks, oh look, you know, to go wakeboarding or skiing, I have to buy, you know, really big, you know, big engine horsepower um, ski boat or wakeboard boat. And that's really not the case. There's um, quite often, and we do this ourselves, you know, we go down the local river here and we have a bit of a ride around. We'll quite often use even down to a, a 4.29 metre tinny that we use sometimes, which we call the skate tinny. We've got a bit of a bar over the back of it that we use and, you know, a lot of the guys that I know use these and we can wakeboard and wake skate behind that quite happily, you know, it's, um, it's a bit of fun. You get out there with a couple of friends and you zoom around. So till a handle tinny even, you can do it so long as you are aware of what you're doing and you stay safe in the boat and you don't do any radical turns or anything like that. So you don't have to have really big horsepower boats. You don't have to particularly have a, a, a massive boat to go out on the water. So you can progress anywhere from your smaller tinnies um, right through to your big wakeboard boats. It just depends on your budget and your level of riding. You know, a, a beginner rider doesn't need to necessarily have a massive boat to go riding behind you. You guys can go out and have just as much fun in your smaller boat. Um, you know, mums and dads with the, you know, with your bow riders, your little, you know, four and a half metre bow riders with, um, you know, 70 horsepower on the back and you want to tow the kids around on tubes or skis or whatever, that if, if they've got that sort of horsepower on the back and, and, and you're confident in your driving, it's great to go out there and have some fun with the friends and family and, and get out there and have some fun in some of our, our beautiful waterways that we've got in South East Queensland. So, um, again, it's just really keeping with, uh, with the boat, make sure you've got all your safety equipment on board, make sure you've got, uh, you're, not, you're adhering to the capacities for the boat, and make sure you've got the equipment that suits the riders, and you'll go out there and have a great, safe and fun day on the water. So with your wakeboards, I'll grab mine as an example if you like. This is, um, this is an O'Brien board, this is the O'Brien Baker. Um, so this is my own personal board that I ride. This is a 140. So the boards come in, a di in quite a few different sizes, you know. So they'll start at as low as about 132, and they'll and they'll fan up to in the in the 40s, you know. So 140, I don't know, two and three centimeters in those sorts of ranges. So um, this guy here, this is a 140. Okay, so I ride this bo uh, board pretty much all the time. Uh, I might turn it the right way so you guys can get a bit of a look at what's going on with it there. Um, so basically this board here, um, this has got a timber core in this board or a, or a timber composite uh, core. This is called the fusion core. This board's actually got a little bit of flex in it. So that'll be quite a bit different to what um, people would be used to. You know, in the past we've pretty much just had stiff boat boards or what's classed as a boat board all the time. Now we're getting quite a few of these hybrid boards being built by nearly all the board manufacturers actually. It allows to flex the board and torsionally twist the board a little bit when you ride. So you can kind of tweak the board when you're riding. I ride this one boat and rail. So this has a base on it called impact base. So the impact base, what that does, you can see it's quite marked up. That's where I've been riding along rails and, and features in the water that we have at the cable parks. So when you have that sort of wear and tear, it's nice to have the impact bases because it takes all the damage out of the bottom of your board and keeps your board structure in good condition so you don't have to worry about breakage and things like that. As you can see on this one here, this one has moulded in fins. Okay, has a couple of small ones. I also have the ability, if I wanted to, to bolt in larger spine fins. What that can do is that can aid in you driving the board when you're behind a boat. Um, it depends on the rider. There's no right and wrong with having fins or not having fins. I ride actually without them because I find these moulded in fins are large enough. Um, but yeah, it's personal choice. If you think, oh, you know what, the board feels a little slippery, I'd like it to drive a bit harder. You can put your fins back in again. Um, or if you think, hey, you know what, this board won't let me do any flat surface tricks, hey, take them out and try it. There's no right or wrong with it. Um, the next one from there is your boots. So there's quite a big range of boots out there now. All the manufacturers have a massive range of boots. Probably the biggest thing that people make a mistake when they buy boots is they buy boots that are physically the wrong size or the wrong style for their riding. There's enclosed toe boots and there's open toe boots. There's no right or wrong with that. It's what you're comfortable with. But what you do want in your boot is you do want really good ankle support and you do want um, what's called J-bars in the back of the boot. You do want good support on your heels so your heels don't lift in the boot too much. Okay, this guy here is a wake skate. So this one here, we basically ride this. Um, it's got kicker ends on it, as you can see here. And we ride it a little bit like a skateboard in the water. We ride them with and without fins. Uh, again, I personally ride them without, um, it, but that's a personal choice. 
Um, but they're basically just a, a, a smooth underside deck. Uh, and you ride them in the water by using the edges of the board, applying pressure to the edges of the board. Um, I'm not particularly good at it, but some of the guys that do ride these are very, very good. So uh, they can do all sorts of tricks. They can clear the wake easily like you can on a wakeboard and they're not attached to it. I'm not sure how they do that, but anyway, they're very good at it. Okay, this guy here, this is a wake surfer. So what we do with this, uh, and we may do a little bit, bit of this later today on the boat, um, is basically we tow quite close to the transom of the boat. And what that does is when we tow up closer to the transom, um, we get on a, on a curl of the wave um, that the boat displaces and we weight the boats that we're using uh, to do this to create like an endless wave. And it's almost like a little beach break. And you can stand on these, you get pulled out of the water on the rope and basically once you've got your momentum and you're in the right sweet spot of the wake, you can ride along and, it, and if you actually get really good at it, you can pop the rope back into the boat. The guys can pull the rope back in and you can surf along without even being attached. They're a great fun thing. They are a specific board. Um, it's a good idea rather than just using your old surfboard behind your mate's boat, which you can do, but you really, the board length and shape will be wrong for doing wake surfing properly. So I'd recommend you went and you actually uh, talked to somebody in the industry and actually got a proper wake surfer. Um, that'll make your riding a little bit easier. They're quite a fat board in the tail and it gives the board momentum and they've got a different shape underneath as well. So um, that one there, I don't wear skate shoes on that. This EVA is very, very soft on your feet. Um, and there's a little bit of a trick to these. So for people who have tried it and fall off all the time and they can't work out why they, they can't get their speeds right, basically what happens is if you weight the tail of the board with your back foot, you'll fade back out of the wash. If you push onto your front foot, if you weight the front of the board, you'll run towards the boat. So that's a bit of a handy hint when you get up and going. So if you think, oh look, I fall out of the back of the wash all the time, you need to put a little bit more weight on your front foot. And the same as if you're racing towards the boat and you jump out all the time, just put a little bit more weight on your back foot and let it fade back into the wake a little bit. All right, everyone, so that uh, gives you some idea on some equipment and some bits and pieces, some handy hints. Uh, as I say, I can't stress enough really, um, take yourself along to your nearest specialty shop or wake shop and uh, have a chat to the guys there. Everybody, you know, all the staff in, in this industry is absolutely fantastic. Everybody loves it to death. So um, don't be frightened to go along and ask some questions. They're only too happy to help you out. Uh, and as I say, make sure you're on the right gear. Uh, you're confident with what you're doing. Hey, go and do some lessons and some training if it helps out and, uh, and or chat just to people who know about it and have done it uh, for a long time and you'll be fine, you'll have a great day out on the water. So I guess from here, um, I think we might head to the water. We'll go down to the local river here and we'll uh, take you guys out and we'll go and do some riding, I think. We'll meet the guys at the water after the break. Still to come. We've brought the whole range of Hummingbird to the boat show. We've got a Hummingbird for every boat, basically from your car toppers all the way up to a 50 foot room. <laughs> 